Hello, welcome to this video on the hyperbolic trig functions and their derivatives. My name is Nikai Rimmer. I'm happy to help you through this journey. Let's go ahead and get started. So what are the hyperbolic trig functions? And now that we know how to take derivatives, what are the derivatives of the hyperbolic trig functions? Let's start off with the hyperbolic sine function. The symbol for it is the regular kind of sine, S-I-N symbol, but with an H. So you can try to pronounce it in its own way, or you could just say the words hyperbolic sine. Um, cinch would be how maybe you could pronounce it. I don't know. All it is is a, a combination of exponential functions, though. You take e to the x, and you subtract e to the minus x, and then divide by 2. That'll be your function. So um, in blue, we have e to the x. In green, we have e to the minus x. If I take the blue minus the green and divide by 2, I end up with the red function. Looks very similar to like y equals x cubed. Okay. The, its derivative then would be, we don't have to use a quotient rule. We keep the 1 half as like a, a factor. Focus on the numerator. e to the x's derivative is e to the x. The minus sign stays. e to the minus x is derivative of e to the minus x, but then times minus 1. So the double minuses make a plus. So we end up with e to the x plus e to the x, e to the negative x, sorry, uh, all divided by 2. Okay. And it turns out that this guy is the other um, common hyperbolic trig function. This guy here that we have is hyperbolic cosine. Okay, hyperbolic cosine is the exact same, but with a plus sign. Okay, so take the same drawing, and then add the blue and the green together, and divide by 2. You end up with the red. Looks almost like a parabola, been shifted up one unit. It never gets any lower than 1. Okay, its derivative, well, e to the x minus e to the minus x. Its derivative is hyperbolic sine. Very important because with trig, cosine's derivative is negative sine. But with hyperbolic trig, hyperbolic cosine's derivative is just hyperbolic sine. Okay, great. What else did you know about these guys? Um, yeah, they're, they're symmetric. When you put in negative x to replace the x, you end up with the opposite of what you start with as far as a hyperbolic sign goes. Negative 1 times your original. That's called being odd. And then when you try that same thing for hyperbolic cosine, it doesn't change it at all. You end up with the exact same function. That's called being even. Okay. All right, great. Um, Let's go to an, uh, an identity regarding these two. Uh, very important identity. You know how sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1? We have an identity with these two. And it's going to be sine squared, a uh, hyperbolic sine squared. Let's take a look at what that is. Square the top, square the bottom. Um, so we have e, and, and rewrite e to the minus x as 1 over e to the x. It'll be easier to see what's going on. e to the x times e to the x is e to the 2x. Remember, you add them together. Um, and then you have minus 1 over e to the 2x. The two middle terms end up being negative 1 and negative 1. So combine them, you get a negative 2. All right, so that's what we get for hyperbolic sine. We can put the 1 fourth on the inside. Hyperbolic sine squared is equal to that. Let's look at hyperbolic cosine squared. Same action, but with the plus sign now. So with the plus, plus 2 on the inside now, basically, the e to the 2x and the 1 over e to 2x, they stay the same. Put the 1 fourth in, and that's an expression for the hyperbolic cosine squared. Now, if we try the same thing that works for a sine and cosine by adding these together, um, we're not going to get anything um, useful out of that. But notice how the first term and the last term, they're exactly the same. So if we subtract then we'll get definitely something useful. The middle terms are only differ by a sign. Um, but not subtracting 
hyperbolic sine minus hyperbolic cosine. We're going to do it the other way around. Hyperbolic cosine squared minus hyperbolic sine squared. Because that way, the uh, left and right terms, the extreme left and right terms, they, the first and last term, they cancel. And then you'll have a half minus a minus a half. And so things cancel nicely and you end up with a 1. So hyperbolic cosine squared minus hyperbolic sine squared is equal to 1. We'll come back to that later. All right. Now, there are the four other guys. I'm just going to go through them rather quickly here. Um, and they they have the same connection that they used to have with the regular sine and cosine. Uh, hyperbolic tangent is going to be hyperbolic sine over hyperbolic cosine. With the uh, over twos, they'll cancel out. Very interesting graph there. Looks a, like, a lot like the arctan graph. But um, it has asymptotes at minus 1 and 1. Um, and then... We have um, hyperbolic cotan, which is going to be, it, this guy's reciprocal, so just flip it. Okay. And then we have the last two, the secant and the cosecant. Hyperbolic secant is going to be the reciprocal of hyperbolic cosine. Okay. There's its graph in blue there. And then hyperbolic cosecant will be the reciprocal of hyperbolic sine. And its graph is in red there. So you could say tanch or kath or sesh or sesh. I don't know, but I just you I'm just gonna use the whole word. Hyperbolic cosecant, hyperbolic secant, hyperbolic cotangent, hyperbolic tangent. <laughs> okay. Um, let's not get the derivative of every one of them, but we do have the derivative of hyperbolic sine and the derivative of hyperbolic cosine. From that we can get everything. Um, let's get the hyperbolic tans derivative. So y is equal to hyperbolic tan times 17. And our job is to figure out what y prime is at the natural log of 4. Okay. So let's go figure out what hyperbolic tangent's derivative is. We have a quotient, right? T hyperbolic tan is just sine over cosine. So um, hyperbolic sine over hyperbolic cosine. So we're going to take and... Uh, Execute the quotient rule. Take the denominator and square it. Take the denominator, bring it to the numerator. Take the derivative of the numerator. Hyperbolic sine's derivative is hyperbolic cosine in blue there. Put a minus sign. Leave the numerator alone. Take the derivative of the denominator. Hyperbolic cosine's derivative is hyperbolic sine in red there. And these guys are squared. Cosine hyperbolic squared and sine hyperbolic squared uh, with a minus sign in between them. And we just showed that that identity is a, is a 1. So this is 1 over hyperbolics cosine squared. And let's go ahead and call it what you would think, hyperbolic secant squared. So yeah, just like with tangent, tangent's derivative is secant squared. Hyperbolic tangent's derivative is hyperbolic secant squared. All right, great. Our job is to take uh, our function, whose 17 times that, take its derivative, which is going to be 17 times the hyperbolic secant, and plug in the natural log of 4. Let's see what happens. Remember, hyperbolic secant is the reciprocal of hyperbolic cosine. So it's the one with the plus, and it's these guys with the e are in the denominator. We have e to the log 4 plus e to the negative log 4 in the denominator, and the 2 is in the numerator. <laughs> All right, so e to the log 4, that's a 4. Be careful with the e to the negative log 4, though. That, you got to take that negative 1 and put it up as an exponent, and then you can cancel. And we'll have 4 to the negative 1, which is a fourth. All right, we're doing great. 4 plus a fourth, 17 fourths. Reciprocate. 17s cancel out. Oh, that's just great. The answer is 8. Okay. So in this video, we've introduced hyperbolic sine and cosine, or just reminded you of them. And we've taken the derivative of both of those and also the derivative of hyperbolic tangent while introducing you also to the reciprocal guys as well.
Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. Please uh, like and subscribe, comment down below. I'll see you in the next video.